Okay, now I'm in, right? Yeah. It says it's recording. girls day at sound waves at sound waves that's why you were looking for your cups you want to yeah. go to sound waves this morning yeah okay I'm standing over here so i don't up your background <laughs> what i'm making sure i don't mess up your background but it has entered the waiting room i know i see it. Yeah. there you go <laughs> <laughs> hello good morning good morning christine how are you Hi. Good. i was having Hi. all sorts of problems this morning but i think i finally it's got okay. it so how it's are you okay. today you doing good good good, good. Okay, um, everything that could go wrong was going wrong today. Yeah. <laughs> right, we're going to start in unit two today. Yeah. All in the family. It's 26, page 26, right? Page 20, well, page, yes. 25 is the intro to the uh, unit. Yeah. They want you to look at the picture on page yeah. 25 and identify the family. This is what we'll be able to do after we, um, well, it says, what do you see in the picture? I see father, mother, and son and daughter. Okay. Mother, father, son, and daughter. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to communicate with my leader in this yeah. class. Okay, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. All right, so we got all fine. <laughs> we have mom and dad and the son and daughter. Yeah. Um, it says talk about your life and family. So these are our goals for the unit are to be able to talk about our life and our family. Talk about what people have in common. Mm -hmm. Ask about sending mail and complete a customs form and ask about family members. So these are things we're going to learn to do in this unit. So okay. let's go to um, page 26. I'm going to have to figure out how to use uh, the whiteboard on this so I can write like I used to write on the board all the time. Mm -hmm. So let's go to letter A. <clears throat> Number one, letter A, what do you know? Look at the pictures of Marta's family. Find Marta in each picture and guess who are the other family members in the pictures? Which family relationships do you know? So which one do you think is Marta? They put the names underneath, so all you have to do is pick her out in the names underneath the picture. Yeah. Maybe she's in the middle? She's in the middle. Who do you think number one is? I'm sorry? Number one, who do you think? Uh, that number one? Yes? I think um, he is uh, her brother. Her brother, that's right. I think he's her brother. What about number two? Uh, her sister. Her sister. And number three? Her dad. Her dad. And number four? Her mom. Yes. And number and five? 
Um, uh, her auntie. Her auntie, very good. And number six? Her uh, uncle. No, number seven is the uncle. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Her, uh, number six his is cousin. a cousin. A cousin, yes. that's right, a cousin. Okay, so and if you look over at the names on the page 27, they tell you who everybody is, what their relationships are. Yeah. So we can go down this list and let's just repeat. I'll say the names and you just repeat them on page 27. Brother. Brother. Sister. Sister. Father. Father. Mother. Mother. Aunt. Aunt. Cousin. Cousin. Uncle. Uncle. Fiance. Fiance. And fiance, which. Fiance. Eight and nine are slightly different. They've used a different name for the man and the woman, but they're, they sound the same when you say the words. Mm -hmm. So fiance is the person that you're promised to be married to. Mm -hmm. Number 10 is niece. Niece. Nephew. Nephew. Wife. Wife. Husband. Husband. Mother-in-law. Mother-in-law. Father-in-law. Father-in-law. Sister-in-law. Sister-in-law. Son. Son. Daughter. Daughter. Children. Children. Parents. Parents. Grandmother. Grandmother. Grandfather. Grandfather. Granddaughter. Granddaughter. Grandson, grandson, and grandchildren. Grandchildren. Um, on the learning strategy underneath that box, it says personalize. Look at the list of family members and think about your own family, and write the names of five family the five family members and their relationship to you. So if you can think about five family members that you have and what their relationship is to you. So you would just put a first name and say what they are. So you have your husband, your son, your daughter. So you could put names with those. Pick, pick some other names out of that list and put some names with some of those other titles in your family. Okay. So we, we where we are? I'm sorry. We're looking at the list at the top of page 27. 27, okay. All those names of family members. Okay. The learning strategy is for you to take five of those titles, those names, and put a name of a person with that title. So just a first name, um, put the name of a person that would go with each one of those. Do you have a brother, Christine? Do no. You have a, no? What about a sister? Uh, no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I can't understand you. Yes, I have one brother and one sister. I'm sorry. Okay, so I want yeah. you to give their first name. It doesn't have to be those, but you can pick any names from this table and put a name of a person you know with each of the, not all of them, but with five of these titles. Can you choose five family members and assign them one of these titles of your family? My family? Yes. Um, I, am, I have one brother. And his first name? His first name is Nina. Okay. And uh, I have uh, one sister. His, uh, her name is uh, Mary. Mary, okay. Yes, and uh, my father, his name is Grace. Okay. My mother, her name is Aida. Okay. I, uh, and I have uh, one auntie, his name is Sabah. Okay. And uh, I have a cousin. Uh-huh. Uh, his name is uh, uh, Tony. Okay, very good. That was yes. more than five. That was very good. So um, I have a brother. My brother's name is Roland. He actually lives with me now. I have a sister. Her name is Eileen. 
My father's name is Roger. My mother's name is Elizabeth. I have an aunt named Ruby. I have a cousin named, um, I have so many cousins. Steve, yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of cousins. Me too, me too, I have a lot of cousins. <laughs> My, my mother had a very large family. My mother was one of six children. So there are lots so of brothers cousin, and sisters. Cousin is called for uh, mother and dad. My the... mother's brothers and sisters, all of their children are my cousins. So my mother had five siblings. She had four sisters and a brother. Four sisters yeah. or five sisters and a brother. There were a lot. Um, but all of their children are my cousins. My yeah. father had two sisters and a brother and their children are my cousins. So I have lots of cousins. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, and uncles are my mother's brothers or my father's brothers. Those would be my uncles. My mother's sisters would be my aunts. My father's sisters would be my aunts. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So, and niece and nephew, that would be my sister's children or my brother's children, would be my niece and nephew. I don't have any nephews. Yes, I do. My brother has a daughter, that would be my niece. Her name is Michelle. My sister has a son, he would be my nephew. His name is Christopher. Okay. We all have very small families compared to our parents. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't have any uh, nephew or uh, niece. So you don't have yet. any brothers or sisters with children? No, because I'm I'm a bigger. <laughs> you're the oldest. A, yeah, oh, you're I'm, the oldest. Yeah, okay. Oldest, yeah. And they're not married yet. No. Sure. Okay. Okay. Well, my I'm my brother was married and he has a daughter and my sister was married and she has a a son. son? Yeah. But we're all older now. So, so niece is for a girl mm -hmm. and nephew for a boy? Yes, absolutely. Very good. So a niece is a girl and a nephew is a boy. Thank you. So, all right. So let's look at um, the next thing we're going to do. We're going to ask questions. We don't need to do all of this. We, well, they want you to look at these pictures and talk about the relationships between the people in these pictures. So the first picture obviously was Marta's graduation picture with her whole family. The next picture is Marta with, um, I think that's her husband, or maybe that's her fiance. Maybe they're not married yet. Marta and her fiance, that would be Marta and Ben. And her sister is, Oh, maybe that's Ben's sister. Ben's sister, Tina, and her two children, Eva yes. and Felix. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the next picture is Marta's wedding picture. Marta and yeah. Ben are getting married. And yeah. Sandra and Tom are Ben's parents. So those would be her in-laws. We say in-laws, her parents are... Um, when she gets married to Ben, Ben's parents are her in-laws. So Ben's mother is Marta's mother-in-law. Parents-in-law. And Ben's father is Marta's father-in-law. So when you look over on page 27, number 14 and 15, so Marta's husband is Ben. His mother becomes Marta's mother-in-law, number 14. And his father becomes Marta's father-in-law, number 15. And then Ben's sister, number 16, becomes Marta's sister-in-law. Mm -hmm. Okay? They are the uh, Ben parents, right? Sandra and Tom and Anna is the parent for Ben? I don't ben understand. Ben. I don't understand Ben. Ben's Sandra, yes. she the parents is parents of Ben. ben. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you're talking about the parents of Ben, yes. Sandra and Tom are Ben's mother and father. Yeah. So when Marta marries Ben, his mother becomes her mother-in-law. Yes. And his father becomes her father-in-law. Yeah. Okay? okay. Okay, yes. 
it's a little bit confusing, but it helps you to give everybody <laughs> yes. the right <laughs> titles. The right yeah. titles, okay? All right, let's okay. look over at the next picture. Um, and these are, the, the, they're numbered from the numbers in this table over here. So number 17 is Marta's son, Tommy. Number 18 is Marta's, Marta's daughter. daughter. Liz. Liz. Number 19 are Marta's children, Tommy and Liz. Yeah. Number 20 are Marta and Ben, and they are the parents of yeah. Tommy and Liz. Okay? Yes. yes. The parents of Tommy and Liz. Uh, Liz, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, so the last picture is <laughs> Liz when she's grown up. Now, see, you've seen the progression of their lives. We started out with Marta's graduation, <coughs> and now we're talking about um, Marta's children. So there's Marta and Ben, and her daughter Liz, and their son Tommy. Now Tommy is married to, <coughs> Tommy's married to Sue, and they have two children, Mary and Benny. Mm-hmm. And those are now the grandchildren of Ben and Marta. So you yeah. see Ben and Marta now have grandchildren and their grandchildren yeah. are Mary and Benny. Yeah, grandchildren. Okay? Yeah. So that shows all the different relationships. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a, a little bit. Do you have any questions about relationships between family members? No. Show in this table. It's a. It's hard sometimes because these names are very different. That's my husband walking behind me. He's showing up in my picture. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. Um. He works from home, so he's here all the time. Yeah. Good. Uh, but these are Marta's family members and the progression of their lives. Let's look at the. Um, workbook and the workbook is going to be more vocabulary from these same pictures so go keep your book open to page 27 where that table is and we'll use that table to give titles to all these people in these pictures so we'll start with um wordplay which family members are related to you by birth and which are related by marriage it's usually pretty easy in english to tell if a relationship is by marriage, because all relationships by marriage are going to say in-law. Yeah. Okay? Relationships that are not by marriage are just going to be the name of who they are. But if yeah. it's by marriage, they're always going to have the name in-law with them. Okay? okay. So that's okay. a big clue. Yeah. So let's start with the beginning. Um, they gave you aunt is related by birth. And they gave you brother-in-law is related by marriage. Because it says in-law, you know it's related by marriage. So the only mm -hmm. things that are going to go under the column related by marriage are all going to have in-law beside them. Okay. Them. And all the rest of them will be related by birth. So granddaughter is related by what? Uh, granddaughter, it's, um, it will be daughter-in-law. Well, daughter-in-law, where does daughter-in-law go? Which column? I'm sorry? Where, which one of these two columns would you put daughter-in-law in? Um, daughter-in-law is the wife? No, the daughter-in-law no. goes under related by marriage. Anything that says in-law is going to go in the column related by marriage. Yeah. Okay, so daughter-in-law is going to go under brother-in-law as related yeah. by marriage, okay? Okay. On the related by birth are going to be these others. Now, fiancé is related by marriage, although they're not married yet, so it really isn't related by marriage or by birth. A fiancé is someone you're promised to before you're actually married, okay? Okay. So I guess they would say it's related by marriage, but you're not really related by marriage until you're actually married. So, mm -hmm. but that's so, fiance. Fiance related by birth? No, not at no, all. It's a no, it's 
probably by marriage. Um, it's probably what they intended, but really they're not related by marriage until they're actually married. And then once they're married, it's related by marriage, but it's not really, I don't know, it's confusing. It's someone you're promised to be married to, but you're not married yet. Does yes. that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Um, granddaughter. Where does granddaughter? Is, uh, it's um, related by, uh, by pairs. Yes, yes. Related by birth. Very good. And husband? Uh, it's related, uh, related by pairs. By marriage. By your marriage. Hus your husband is related yes. by marriage. <laughs> yeah. Because you're married to your husband. So your yes. husband is related <laughs> by marriage. That's the only exception to the in-law rule, right? He's yeah. your husband. He's related by marriage. By marriage. Okay. Your mother? Uh, related by birth. Yes. What about your mother-in-law? Uh, by marriage. Yes. Your nephew? Uh, I think it's by marriage also. Uh, no. I think it's by birth because your nephew is your sister or brother's son. So that's by birth. You mm -hmm. didn't get your nephew because of who you're married to. Your nephew was be because of who your sister or brother was. Yeah. Okay, so that's by okay. birth. Nephew okay. is by birth. Okay. And niece, niece is the it's same way. It's also by birth, yes, yeah. Yes, niece is the same way. And your sister? Is uh, related by birth. Yes. And a wife? Is uh, by marriage. Yes, that's right. So wife and husband are both by marriage, and they're not in-laws because that's your um, who you're married to, okay? Yeah, okay. Okay, let's look at the exercise B at the Miller family tree, write the family relationships. So they've given you a family tree over here on the right with pictures. And yeah. they want you to say who the people are, what is the relationship between the people that they've named. So if you look in the picture, you see Daniel and Sandra at the top of the pictures. Mm -hmm. Daniel and Sandra are husband and wife. You see yeah. how they gave you that one? That's husband and wife. Yeah. Who are Charles and Gloria? What is the relationship between Charles and Gloria? <clears throat> now let's look at the picture. Daniel and Sandra are married. They yeah. have two children. Daniel and Sandra have two children. Their children are Monica and Gloria. Okay. Yeah. So their two children are Monica and Gloria. So Charles is married to Monica. Gloria is married to George. So uh, what is the relationship between Charles and Gloria? I think brother-in-law and daughter. Yes, brother-in-law and sister-in-law. Sister-in-law? Yes. Okay. Brother-in-law and sister-in-law. That's exactly right. Charles is the brother-in-law and Gloria is the sister-in-law because they're only related because... Charles is married to Monica and Gloria is married to George. Yeah. What about Monica and Gloria? Uh, sisters? Yes, Monica and Gloria are sisters. Very good. Monica and Gloria are sisters. What about George and Sandra? Now, George is way over to the right and Sandra's above. So what are George and Sandra? How are they related? Um, he's um, mother-in-law. And son-in-law son-in-law yeah yes mother-in-law and son-in-law very good he's the son-in-law and sandra is the mother-in-law very good so you have son-in-law and mother-in-law mm -hmm. <clears throat> what about monica and sally uh, so mother and uh, daughter yes very good mother and daughter Monica and Sally are mother and daughter. What about Joseph and Tommy? Uh, brothers. Brothers, very good. Joseph and Tommy are brothers. Gloria and Sally, now Gloria's over to the right, 
and Sally's down at the bottom. So how are Gloria and Sally related? Mm. Uh, Gloria is um, uh, auntie. Yes, and Sally and is the niece. Is the niece, yes. Niece. So that's niece and auntie. You're right. Niece and auntie. Very good. That is Gloria and Sally. What about Daniel and Tommy? Daniel's at the very top and Tommy's at the very bottom. Uh, is the grandfather and grandson? Absolutely. Very good. Very, very good. Grandfather and grandson. Now over on the next page, it says, look at the family tree that they've drawn for you over here on page 14. Now we're on page 15 and complete the statement. So again, this is the relationships between the people in this picture. Daniel and Sandra are Gloria's parents. Let me yeah. get that one for you. So Daniel and Sandra are Gloria's parents. Mm -hmm. Joseph and Sally are Monica's uh, children. Yes, children. And you can use that table in your book for the words um, on page 27 in your book. Children is number 19. Yes. So you can copy the words in yeah. the book. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Joseph and Sally are Monica's children. Um, Monica is George's. Is a sister-in-law. Yes. Very good. Sister-in-law. Monica is George's sister-in-law. Number sixteen from the table. Mm -hmm. Sister-in-law. Charles is Tommy's uh, father. Yes, very His good, father. father. Charles is Tommy's father. <clears throat> Daniel is Joseph's grandfather. Yes, grandfather. Very good. Daniel is Joseph's grandfather. Joseph is Sally's uh, brother. Brother, very good. Joseph is Sally's brother. Sally is Tommy's sister. Sister, very good. Sally is Tommy's sister. Joseph is Gloria's is the nephew. Nephew, very good. Joseph is Gloria's nephew. Very good. Joseph is Gloria's nephew. Now, at the bottom, they want you to do your own personal family tree. Okay. And they, they started out with your grandfather and your grandmother. I tried doing this for my, my family and my mother's family, and this became such a huge thing. It was all over the whole board because my mother and father both have all these brothers and sisters. It was amazing. <laughs> it would probably be easier for you if you have a smaller family. But yeah. my mother and father's families are very, very large. It's very difficult. <laughs> Um, okay, so, but they want you to do this for your family. So if you want to do that, um, and if you come up with a question, I know last week I gave you a couple things to do. Did you have any questions on the things I gave you to do last week? No. Okay. Well, this, this is for you to do of your family. So you would start, okay. you can start with your grandmother and your grandfather, and you can just choose either your mother's parents or your father's parents, because you have both. Okay. So okay. just choose one family. I would choose the smaller one <laughs> just to make it easier. Maybe then, I'm a smaller family. Yes, <laughs> I can do it. And, and then below those grandparents, you're going to list their children. So your mother or your father and their brothers and sisters would be their children. Okay. And then the children of your um, fathers and mother, fathers or mothers, brothers and sisters. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's go back to our big book, um, lesson two. Look at the picture, read about the Garcia family, which members of the Garcia family lived together and who did they live with in Mexico? So I'm gonna read beside this picture. Do you wanna read too? Would you like for me to read it and then you read it to me? Okay, okay. 
My name is Inez Garcia. You want to repeat that? Yes. My name is Inez Gra Garcia. This is a picture of my family. This is a picture of my family. This is me. This is me. My husband. My husband. And my two kids. And my two kids. We live in an apartment in Los Angeles. We live in an apartment in Los Angeles. In Mexico. In Mexico. We lived with my mother and father. We lived with my mother and father. Okay. So they're talking about the relationships between these people. So the questions they asked, which members of the Garcia family live together? So which people in this picture live together today? Which ones of these people live together today? Uh, her husband and two kids. Yes, and exactly. Her two kids. Um, who did they live with in Mexico? Uh, her mother and father. Yes, her mother and father. Very good. In your country, which family members usually live together? So in Egypt, when you were living in Egypt, which members of the family usually live together? Uh, my father and mother and uh -huh. um, my brother and sister. So they still live at home with your mother and father? Yes. Okay, very good. So they're not married. When you get yes. married, you move away into another house? Yes. Okay. Um, that's the that's basically the same way here in the US in the US usually once we get married we move away and live with our husband or wife um, yeah. now my brother has some serious health issues so he lives with me now my brother does because he needs somebody to help take care of him oh yeah well that happens as we get older <clears throat> so you may someday take care of your mother or your father or a brother or a sister of course you're the oldest so you they may be taking care of you right yes right <laughs> right but um my brother's actually older than i am and um he has lots of things going on he's blind he um he has parkinson's oh he, he um, has difficulty walking because he has something called foot drop where his feet don't there's no muscle to, muscles in his ankles. They don't hold his feet up anymore. So his feet drop when he walks. Oh. So it makes him fall a lot. Yeah. So, that, so um, you take care of him. Yes. You are a good sister. <laughs> Thank you. Really? <laughs> but um, he, he has lived near me for a long time. I used to go to his apartment and take care of him. But when he ended up in the hospital the last time, I told him, you can't live by yourself. Yes. Because um, if he were to fall and nobody knew that he had fallen, we wouldn't know to go check on him. So we yes. told him, you need to stay here so that if anything yes, happens, you're right. And, right, yeah. we know where you are. We can take care of you. Yeah, good. <clears throat> but that happens sometimes as we get older. All right, yeah. let's go back to the, the big book. Okay. Uh, look at the picture of two new co-workers. So this picture in the book is a picture of a lady and a man. Yeah. And they are new co-workers, so they work together. Mm -hmm. um, their names are Amy and Babakar. What do people talk about when they are getting to know each other? What kinds of topics of conversation would you have when you're just getting to know somebody new? Christine, have you ever worked outside the home in a job? No, I didn't have a job, no. I didn't work. I hope to work. <laughs> well, as your English gets better and better, it will be more much easier for you to get a yes, job. Yes, I so, hope. Um, well, of course, this environment today is not good for anybody, but eventually I think it will get better. And yes. learning English will help you a lot. Yes, I know. Um, this is the, these two people have only just met. So mm -hmm. this is their first meeting of somebody they've never known before. Maybe a neighbor that you've met that you've never known before. You might get to know. What would be some of the things you would talk about 
when you meet somebody for the first time. Yeah. So they tell you to listen to the conversation. So they're talking about the size of Babakar's family. And mm -hmm. Babakar lives in a very small family. He has one brother. Mm -hmm. And I think he has two sisters. His yeah. sisters live in Senegal. And his brother lives here. So he has a small family with two sisters and one brother. That's not too large. That's a fairly small yes, family. Yes, small. Yeah. Um, and it tells where they live and who they are. So, but, so when number one says, what size family does Babakar have? He has a small, small. family. Yes. He has one brother. One, one brother. And where do his sisters live? They live in Senegal. Mm -hmm. So, brother uh, Babakar's brother lives with Babakar. They share an apartment. So Babakar and his brother live together in the same apartment. Kind of like my brother lives with me right now. My brother lives yes. here in my house. So Babakar's brother lives with him. Yeah. Let's um. Let's read these sentences over at the top of the next page and uh, repeat them. Before I do that, go over to the pronunciation watch in the upper right corner. Yes. It says, important words in a sentence are stressed. Short grammar words, for example, a, the, and and are usually short and weak. So those words are words that are used to join things. And those words are not stressed. They're not emphasized. They're just said, they're said quietly and they're just kind of glossed over, but the words are still there. So let's read these sentences. I'll read them and you repeat them back to me. Okay. I have a brother and a sister. I have a brother and a sister. Very good. We live in the same apartment. We live in the same apartment. He works in a hospital. He works in a hospital. Okay, now we're going to repeat the conversation. Tell mm -hmm. me about your family. Tell me about your family. Well, I don't have a very big family. Well, I don't have a very big family. I have a brother and two sisters. I have a brother and two sisters. My sisters live in Senegal. My sisters live in Senegal. But my brother lives here. But my brother lives here. Okay, so then they, they have a big picture at the bottom and they're saying, tell me about your family and who the people are in your family. So your family is pretty small, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, my family is pretty small. I have one son and one daughter and they're not married. So I don't have any daughters-in-law or sons-in-law. So um, I don't have a very large family. You told me you have one brother and one sister? Yeah. And they're not married, so you don't have any yeah. in-laws. Your in-laws are only your husband's family. What about your husband's family? Is it a big family? Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> they're so a you big have a, a whole lot of in-laws, right? Yeah, because um, uh, my husband is the opposite. He is the youngest uh, brother. Oh, okay. And me is the older sister <laughs> um, in my family. So he has a big family. Yes. And you have a small family. Yes. <laughs> very good. Very good. They're opposite. Yes. Very, very good. Okay, so let's turn over to the top of page 30. And there's a grammar box. And I'm going to read these sentences from the grammar box. And you repeat them after me. Okay. I have two sisters. I have two sisters. We live in New York. We live in New York. They work in a school. They work in a school. He has a brother. He has a brother. She lives in Senegal. She lives in Senegal. My brother works in a hospital. My brother works in a hospital. Now, I want to go over these with you where it says, I have two sisters. It would also be we have two sisters or they have two sisters. I live, we live, they live. 
yes. I work, we work, they work. So those are yes. all interchangeable. Yeah. You go to the bottom, he has, she has, my brother has, yeah. he lives, she lives, my brother lives, he works, she works, my brother works. So those are all interchangeable in those boxes. I want to make sure that you understand that. Let's go over to the negative side. Mm -hmm. I don't have a big family. I don't have a big family. We don't live in Miami. We don't live in Miami. They don't work in an office. They don't work in, a, in an office. He doesn't have a sister. He doesn't have a sister. She doesn't live here. She doesn't live here. My sister doesn't work in a hospital. My sister doesn't work in a hospital. In the grammar watch with he, she, or it, the simple present verb ends in S. Yeah. So <clears throat> the simple present ends in S, like lives and works. Yes. Use don't or doesn't to make a sentence negative. So we use this don't and doesn't when we're trying to speak in the negative. Okay. Um, and the last one, use the base form of the verb with don't and doesn't. So the base form of the verb is have, live, or work. Okay. So they're talking about using the base form of the verb. Yes. In the negative. Mm hmm Okay, let's go down to number one practice, complete the sentences and underline the correct words. My cousin has a wife and two children. Hmm. Go ahead and read that one. My cousin has a My wife. My cousin is a wife. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. My cousin has a wife and two children. Yeah. Number two. They They don't have yes. children. They don't have children. Very good. Number three, her cousin, her cousin works in a, a theater. A theater. A theater, theater like a movie theater. theater. Yeah. Her cousin theater. works with an S in a theater. Yeah. theater. Number four, my mother-in-law lives in South Street. Lives with an S. Lives yeah. on South Street. My mother-in-law lives on South Street. Our grandparents don't live here. Very good. Our grandparents don't live here. Number six. We don't work in, uh, sorry, we don't work on weekends. Very good. We don't work on weekends. Shelly and Kirk have twins. Yes, have twins. Shelly and Kirk have Twins. twins. Yeah. Because it's two people, it's the plural, yeah. like they, and they have twins. Very good. Yeah. Um, complete the sentences. Write the correct forms of the words in parentheses. So they've given you the word, but sometimes you have to change it a little bit to put it in the blank, okay? Okay. So Clara at a beauty salon, what goes in the blank? Uh, works. Works with an S. Clara yes. works at a beauty salon. Number yeah. two, his sister-in-law doesn't have a job. Very good. Doesn't have a job. If you're not sure, look up at the grammar box at the top. It's she, my sister-in-law. She mm -hmm. doesn't have a job. Very good. Yes. She doesn't have a job. Number three, Nina's fiance leaves near the city very good lives with an s lives yes. near the city very good her husband works with her brother very good her husband s. works with her brother yes number five i i i i negative don't the negative i don't live with my yes. parents very good i don't live with my parents. I don't live with my parents because it's in the negative and it's I. I don't live with mm -hmm. my parents. Very good. Number six. Our family uh, live in Colombia. Very good. Our family 
lives in Colombia. Number is seven. Lives is by S? With S, yes. Because it's, um, it's an it. Our family, if you went up here and looked at, well, they don't have an it up there, but our family is a unit. Our family is a unit, an it. One unit. Yes. yes. Okay. And our family lives, lives with, in an S, with an S in Colombia. So yeah. you do need the S on lives. Our family lives yeah. in Colombia. Very good. Number seven. They don't work in a big office. Very good. They don't work in a big office. They don't work in a big office. Number eight. Uh, Emilio doesn't. Emilio, Emilio, Emilio doesn't. Doesn't have any cousin. Very good. Emilio doesn't have any cousins. Emilio doesn't have any cousins. Yes. Emilio doesn't have any cousins. Doesn't. Okay, over on the next page, mm -hmm. number two, look at the Mendez family tree and complete the sentences. Okay. <clears throat> Use the correct forms of the words. So they've given you words, but they want you to put them in the correct form. Okay. So number one, let's look at the picture first of the Mendez family. You have Arturo from Lima, Peru and mm -hmm. Sandra from Lima, Peru, and they're married, and they have two sons, Marco, I mean, Marcos and Pablo are their sons, mm -hmm. and Pablo is married to Elena, and Pablo and Elena have three children, and their children are Celia, Alba, and Sarah. Mm -hmm. Marcos is not married, okay? Yes. So, Look at the Mendez family tree and complete the sentences. Use the correct forms of the words. Alba, find Alba in the picture. Yeah. She's in the bottom row. She doesn't live in Los Angeles. In Los Where Angeles. does she live? Where does Alba in live? In Chicago. In Chicago. Very good. She lives in Chicago. Number two, Marcos. Um, Marcos lives in, in Lipa, Limpa. Lima. Lima. Lima, Lima, Peru. Marcos lives in Lima. He lives in Lima, Peru with his mother and father because he's not married. Yes. So he lives in Lima, Peru. Yeah. What about Elena? Uh, Elena um, has a son. No, no, doesn't have. Yes, correct. Your phone just went blank. Are you still there? This doesn't have. Elena doesn't have a son. Very good. Elena doesn't have a son. Marcos um, has a brother. Very good. Marcos has a brother. Marcos a has brother. a brother. Um, number okay. five, Elena and Pablo. Mm. Because it's Dina and Pablo, yeah, um, live in uh, New York. Yes, Elena and Pablo live in New York. Elena and Pablo live in New York. Number six. Sandra um, has three grandchildren. Very good. Sandra has three grandchildren. Sandra has three grandchildren. Number seven. Uh, Pablo and Marcos uh, don't have a sister. Very good. Pablo and Marcos don't have a sister. They don't have a sister. Sandra and Arturo. Sandra and Arturo live in, uh, no, uh, don't live in Dallas. Very good. They don't live in Dallas. Sandra and Arturo don't live in Dallas. They live in Lima, Peru. They do not live in Dallas. Very good. Yes. It says make three new sentences about the Mendez family. Can you find some other relationships in this picture and make sentences that are similar to the ones we just did? For instance, um, Elena and Pablo 
have three what? three daughters yes elena and pablo have three daughters <clears throat> can you make another sentence from those pictures oh um uh arthur and sandra have um, three grandchildren very good they have three grandchildren yeah marcus and pablo um are brother very good marcus and pablo are brothers uh pablo and elena have three uh daughters very good very good so you have the um the hang of that and the idea is that you can make sentences about family relationships in your own family and also in a family where they've given you these pictures this mm -hmm. family tree and this family tree gives you an idea of how they want you to do that family tree in your book in your workbook so when you're working in your workbook and you want to see how to do that this shows you how to do that you don't have to put pictures obviously just so things. this is related by uh, the workbook this one yes we're going to go back to the workbook now and do um, yeah. the pages for lessons two and three in the workbook on page 16 mm -hmm. complete the sentences write the correct forms of the words in parentheses so they've given you words in parentheses and they want you to write the correct forms of those words okay. so we're talking about sheila and what about sheila she lives with an s she lives in yes in california, in california. yes what about work? She works in a hospital. Yes, she works in a hospital with an S. You need to add the S. She, she works in a hospital. What about the next one? She has a son. She has a son, has, H-A-S. That's the right form of the verb to have. She has a son. Mm -hmm. Number two, Mr. and Mrs. Wang. Live in New York City. Yes, Mr. and Mrs. Wang live because it's two people, there's no S. Yes. Mr. and Mrs. Wang live in New York City. They... They work in a flower store. Yes, they work in a flower store. They... They have two children. Very good, they have two children. Number three, Xin Hua... Lives in uh, Los Angeles. Yes, he lives with an S. He lives in Los Angeles. He, he works at a bank. Yes, very good. He works with an S. He works at a bank. He, he has a wife uh, and a new baby. Yes, he has a wife and a new baby. My sister and I, now that's we, plural. My sister and I uh, live Yes. in a small town. Yes, my sister and I live... <laughs> in a small town we we have a job we have jobs after school yes we have jobs after school we have jobs after school we work in a restaurant we work in a restaurant part b says write negative sentences now all of those that we just did in part a were in the positive in the affirmative okay now mm -hmm. we're going to do okay. it in the negative so now we're going to be using don't and doesn't and not. So all of these will be in the negative. Number one, Alicia and Carlos live on Franklin Street. We're going to change that to the negative. So when we change that into the negative, we're going to say Alicia and Carlos don't, don't. live on Franklin Street. So mm -hmm. Alicia and Carlos don't live on Franklin Street. Yes. They gave you Camille works in a hospital. How would we change that to the negative? Camilla doesn't work in a hospital. Very good. Camille doesn't work in a hospital. Camille doesn't work in a hospital. Number three, I have two jobs. I don't have two jobs. Very good. I don't have two jobs. Number four, Deshi and Bao live in Florida. Um, Deshi and Bo don't Bao. live. Bao, Bao, Bao. Bao. 
Bayo. Don't live in Florida. Very good. Deshi and Bayo don't live in Florida. Deshi and Bayo don't live in Florida. And number five, you have four sisters. You don't have, you don't, you don't have four sisters? Yes, yes, you don't have four you sisters. Don't. You don't have four sisters. And number six, Manuel lives downtown. And man uh, doesn't live downtown. Very good. Doesn't live downtown. And you'll notice when you make it in the negative, you take the S off the verb. Yeah. So Manuel doesn't live downtown. Very good. Manuel doesn't live downtown. Yes. Let's go over to the top of page 17. Complete the paragraph. Mm -hmm. Write the correct forms of the words. So we're going to start one sentence at a time. My sister and I, and they've told you which verb to use. My sister and I live in, live Boston. in Boston. My sister and I live in Boston. I, I live in an apartment in downtown. Very good. I live in an apartment downtown. My sister lives with an S. My sister lives in a house outside the city. My sister lives yeah. in a house outside the city. I, I work in an office. Very good. I work in an office. I work in an office. Number five, my sister doesn't work in an office. Very good. My sister doesn't work in an office. My sister doesn't work in an office. She, she works in a school. She works in a school. She and her husband uh, have three sons. Very good. She and her husband have three sons. But they... But they don't have any daughters. But they, they do don't have any children. Oh, wait a minute. I'm on the wrong line. She and her husband live... I'm sorry. She and her husband have three sons, but they don't have any Heaven. daughters. They don't yeah. have any daughters. Yeah. My husband and I... Um, don't have any children. Yet. My husband and I don't have any children yet. Yes. I'm happy that we... We live near my sister's family. Very good. I'm happy that we live near my sister's family. So the whole paragraph reads, my sister and I live in Boston. I live in an apartment downtown. My sister lives in a house outside the city. I work in an office. My sister doesn't work in an office. She works in a school. She and her husband have three sons, but they don't have any daughters. My husband and I don't have any children yet. I'm happy that we live near my sister's family. Very good. Yes. Now we're going to, this is based on the CD that's in the back of your workbook, but again, I'm not going to play the CD. So let's just um, do these sentences. Um, Roberta has a new job. That's true. Roberta has, and mm -hmm. we're underlining, the, I'm underlining the verb so you can see how it's used. Roberta has a new job and that one's true. Roberta works in a department store, and that one's true. Why don't you repeat these sentences after I read them? Roberta okay. has a new job. Do you want to repeat I want after you? To you? Repeat. Yes, number okay. one. Rupert, Roberta has a new job. Number two, Roberta works in a department store. Roberta works in a department store. Roberta doesn't live near her job. Roberta doesn't live near her job. Very good, and that one was false. false. Number four, Roberta works in the evening. Roberta works in the evening. And that's false, she works during the day. Roberta has children. Roberta has children. And that's true. Roberta's husband works in a hospital. Roberta's husband works in a hospital. And that one's true. Very good. Now they want you to make it personal and think of two members of your family. 
and write sentences about each person's life and work. Are your brother and sister working? Do they have jobs? Yes. Okay, Present. so go ahead. Present only, my present only. Your brother only? Where does yes. he live and where does he work? He lives in uh, Egypt and... Uh, in Cairo? In Cairo, yes. And uh, he works as um, uh, at, at an office. At an office. He works at an office. Okay. Yes. And my sister lives in Cairo, but she yes, doesn't but she have doesn't a job. Have, yes. A job. Very good. Very good. But she doesn't have a job. Yeah. Okay. Let's go over back to our regular book, back to the big book. Lesson four. And this is reading. And when mm -hmm. I do the reading, I'll read it the whole thing and then I'll read it slowly and have you repeat each sentence. Okay. So before we read, look at the picture at the top of the page. What is this man doing in the picture? He sent? It's called juggling. When you um, throw balls up in the air and you catch them, the name of that is juggling. Okay? Juggling? juggling you throw up a ball and catch one and you toss it back those that's called juggling he has several things he's responsible for several things he's having to do yeah. so the things that he has to do he has work fun school and family mm -hmm. so he has four different responsibilities he has work fun school and family yes what he how do you think he feels? He's shocked. Overworked? Yes. Um, stressed. Stressed. That's something to talk about is he's stressed. Okay. Um, do you ever feel like that? Do you ever feel like you have too many things to do and not enough time to do them? Yes. <laughs> I have days like that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So that's what this, um, this, this is an advice column at the bottom of the page. It's Dear Kate, and she's giving advice for your life. Okay. So read the letters in a newspaper advice column. Mm -hmm. Dear Kate, advice for your life. Mm -hmm. um, I will repeat with you. No, I'm going to read no. the whole thing through first. Okay. So follow along while I read it, and then I'll read it and you can repeat. Okay. Dear Kate, my husband and I both work. I work days and he works two jobs days and evenings. We have three kids ages 8, 10, and 14. They need a lot of my time. They need me to help them with homework. I take them to school activities and sports events. And then there's all the housework, the cooking, the laundry, the cleaning, the shopping, and the bills. I need to do a million things at the same time. Help, I can't do it all. Tired Tanya. Dear Tanya, you're right. You can't do it all. You're trying to do too much. First, ask yourself, what is most important? You can't do everything. Only do the important things. Second, get help. Ask your children to help with the housework. They can do the dishes, take out the garbage, do the laundry, and do other chores. Ask your husband to help on the weekends. Third, say no. You already have many responsibilities. When people ask you to do something extra, say, I'm sorry, but I don't have the time right now. Finally, take some time for yourself. <clears throat> Make sure you get a little time every day to do something you like. Watch a TV program, take a bath, or read a magazine. Take care of yourself first, then you will have the energy to take care of others. Kate. Now I'll read it, and this time you repeat. Okay. Dear Kate, advice for your life. Dear Kate, advice for your life. <clears throat> Dear Kate. Dear Kate. My husband and I both work. What? It's okay. I'm sorry. My husband and I pause work. I work days and he works two jobs, days and evenings. I work days and he works two jobs, days and evening. We have three kids, ages 8, 10, and 14. 
We have three kids, ages is 8, 10, and 14. They need a lot of my time. They need a lot of my time. They need me to help them with homework. They need me to help them with, uh, with homework. I take them to school activities. I take them to school activities. And sports events. And sports events. And then there is all the housework. And then there is all the housework. The cooking, the laundry, the cleaning. The cooking, the laundry, the cleaning. The shopping, the bills. The shopping, the bills. 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 I need to do a million things at the same time. I need to do a million things at the same time. Help, I can't do it all. Help, I can't do, uh, I can't do it all. Tired Tanya. Tired Tanya. This is me, tired Christine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> Dear Tanya. Dear Ta Tanya. You're right. You are right. You can't do it all. You can't do it all. You're trying to do too much. You are trying to do too much. First, ask yourself, what is most important? First, ask yourself, what is most important? You can't do everything. You can't do everything. Only do the important things. Only do the important things. Second, get help. Second, get help. Ask your children to help with the housework. Ask your children to help with the housework. They can do the dishes, take out the garbage. They can do the dishes, take out the garbage. Do the laundry and do other chores. Do the laundry and do other chores. Ask your husband to help on the weekends. Ask your husband to help on weekends, on the weekends. Third, say no. Third, say no. You already have many responsibilities. You already have many responsibilities. When people ask you to do something extra, say, I'm sorry, but I don't have the time right now. When people ask you to do something extra, say, I'm sorry, but I don't have the time right now. Finally, take some time for yourself. Finally, take some time for yourself. Make sure you get a little time every day to do something you like. Make sure you get a little time every day to do something you like. Watch a TV program. Watch a TV program. Take a bath. Take a bath. Or read a magazine. Or read a magazine. Take care of yourself first. Take care of yourself first. Then you will have energy to take care of others. Then you will have the energy to take care of others. Kate. Kate. She's right. Okay. <laughs> so, Christine, what do you do to take care of yourself? What do you do to relax? Um, I love to, uh, to drink coffee outside. Okay. okay. Yeah. And uh, I love to make a shopping. Okay. So you like to go shopping? Yes. <laughs> um, uh, and I love to watch TV. Okay. Yes. Okay, very good. So you find things to do that are just for you, things that you enjoy doing. Yes. Okay, let's look over on page 33. Check your understanding. Read Tanya's letter to Kate, which we just read it a second time. Okay. Then read these sentences and circle true or false. So we're gonna look at these sentences. And based on the article we just read, which ones are true and which ones are false? Okay. Tanya works two jobs. No, it's no, false. That's false. Very good. Tanya does not work two jobs. That's false. Tanya is a student. False. False. She is not a student. Yeah. Number three, Tanya has three children. 
Yes, true. Yes, she has three children. That's true. Tanya takes care of her kids in the afternoon. Yes, true. Actually, they said that one's false. She um, take, take them in activity. And she, ta sport. she does things with them in the evenings, not in the afternoon. Uh, oh, in takes the them evening? to school activities and sports events. Yeah. Um, they need a lot of her time, but they don't, she doesn't take care of them in the afternoons because she works. Yes. So it's probably in the evenings. It's false. Yes. Um, number five, Tanya takes her children to school activities and sports events. Yes. True. Yes. True. Number five is true. And number six, Tanya does a lot of housework. False. No, that's true. Tanya does a oh. lot of housework. Because does a lot. Think, uh, yes. Yes, because Kate told her to get her children to help her do the housework, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. You're right. So I'm letter sorry. B, when you read Kate's letter to Tanya, check the mm -hmm. advice that Kate gives her. Okay. So just put a check mark by the things that Kate told her to do. The first one, only do the things that are important. Yes. Yes. So that one gets a check mark. Ask other people for help. Mm, yes. Yes. So Gowan gets a check mark. She's supposed to ask her children and her husband to help her. Go to bed earlier and get more sleep. No. No, that was not in there. That one does not get a check mark. The next one says, say no when people try to give you more responsibilities. Yes. Yes. That one gets a check mark. Say no when people try to give you more responsibilities. Yes. The next one, make a schedule of your time. Yes. No, that, that no. could be a helpful thing, but that is not one of the things that Kate told her. Yes. Kate okay. did not tell her to make a schedule, so that one does okay. not get a check mark. Yes. And the last one, take a little time each day for yourself. Yes. Yes, that one gets a check mark. Very good. So what is Tanya's problem? Um, uh, she is a tired and uh, tired. she has a lot of uh, housework. A lot of responsibilities. She has yes. housework. She takes her children to school activities and sports events. So she has a lot of responsibilities. Yes. And she's tired. So what is Kate's advice to her? Uh, to um, her, her advice, is she, uh, she asked her children to help her. Ask her children to help her. And ask uh, uh, her husband to help her uh, yes, in weekends. Yes. And to say no if... Um, to say sorry if if uh, some people give her more or extra responsibility. Yes, when people ask her to do something extra, tell them to say no. Yes. Yes. And what was the last thing Tanya told her? To the last time to thing? take care of herself. And, yes, uh, take care of herself. So yes. take care of herself. Find something she enjoys doing, and take care of herself. Yes. Do you agree with Kate's advice? Yes. Yes. Totally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, do you have any other advice for Tanya? Can you think of anything else you might tell Tanya other than the things that Kate already told her? No. Yes. Um, she was yes. pretty thorough in her advice. Yes. I think telling her to um, take care of herself first so that she'd be able to yes. take care of others. Um, and asking for help. So that was yes. good. Um, the reading skill, let me read that yellow and red box to you. Retelling information. Retell means to say in your own words what you read or hear. The words are different, but the meaning is the same. And we just did that when we answered these questions. We're retelling what Tanya wrote to Kate what Tanya said her problems were, and what kind of advice Kate gave her in return. So that's what retelling is. When you read something and then you say it again in different words, that's called retelling. Okay? Okay. Okay. All right. In the workbook for lesson four, it's another article to read, and it talks about changing U.S. families. And again, I'll read it first like I did the last one. Okay. And then I'll read it and let you repeat. So okay. changing U.S. families. Like most Americans, Ya Wen Chen moved out of her parents' home when she was in her early 20s. Today, Ya Wen is married with a family of her own, and now she and her family live with her mother. 
Yawen situation is becoming more common in the U.S. The number of homes that include children, parents, grandparents, and sometimes great-grandparents is increasing. By the year 2015, experts believe that the number of three and four generation households will continue to grow. Families of new immigrants are the most likely to live together. In many cultures, a traditional family has four generations living under one roof. My parents moved to the U.S. from China, explains Yao Wen. Back home, it wasn't unusual for a big family to live together. There are many benefits to living with a big family. Housing in some areas of the U.S. is hard to find and it can be expensive. Living together helps family members save money. Family members can help one another in other ways too. My mother takes care of my kids so I can go to school and get a degree, says Yao Wen. <laughs> my mother and my children have a close relationship. That's very good for all of them. And when my mother needs to go to the doctor, I can take her. We take care of one another. However, living with a big family can be difficult. As Ya Wen says, there isn't much privacy. My mother and two daughters share the same bedroom. I know it is difficult for my mother when my daughters make a lot of noise. It's never quiet in a big family. And when my husband and I argue, my mother always knows. Okay, so now I'm going to read it and you read, repeat it after me. Okay. Changing U.S. families. Changing U.S. families. Like most Americans. Like most Americans. Yao Wen Chen moved out of her parents' home. Yao Wen Chen moved out of her parents' home. When she was in her early 20s. When she was in her early 20s. Today, Yawen is married. Today, Yawen is married. With a family of her own. With a family of her own. And now she and her family live with her mother. And now she and her family live with her mother. Yawen's situation is becoming more common in the U.S. Yawen situation is becoming more common in the U.S. The number of homes that include children, parents. The numbers of homes that include children, parents. Grandparents and sometimes great-grandparents is increasing. Grandparents and sometimes great-grandparents is increasing. By the year 2015, experts believe that the number of three and four generation households will continue to grow. By the year 2015, uh, experts believe that the number of three and four generations, generation household will continue to grow. Families of new immigrants are the most likely to live together. Families of new immigrants are the most likely to live together. In many cultures, a traditional family has four generations living under one roof. In many cultures, a traditional family has four generations living under one roof. My parents moved to the U.S. from China, explains Yao Wen. My parents moved to the U.S. from China, explains Yao Wen. Back home, it wasn't unusual for a big family to live together. Back home, it wasn't unusual for a big family to live together. There are many benefits to living with a big family. There are many benefits to living with a big family. Housing in some areas of the U.S. is hard to find and it can be expensive. Housing in some areas of, U of the U.S. is hard to find and it can be expensive. Living together helps family members save money. Living together helps family members save money. Family members can help one another in other ways, too. Family members can help one another in other ways, too. My mother takes care of my kids. My mother takes care of my kids. So I can go to school and get a degree. So I can go to school and get a, a degree. Says Yawen. Says Yawen. Ya
Yeah, yeah, yes, win. Yeah, yeah, win. win. Yes. My yeah, mother, win. my mother and my children have a close relationship. My mother and my children have a close relationship. That's very good for all of them. That's very good for all of them. And when my mother needs to go to the doctor. And when my mother needs to go to the doctor. I can take her. I can take her. We take care of one another. We take care of one another. However, living with a big family can be difficult. However, living with a big family can be difficult. As Yahweh says, there isn't much privacy. As Yahweh says, there is not much privacy. My mother and two daughters share the same bedroom. My mother and two daughters share the same bedroom. I know it is difficult for my mother. I know it is difficult for my mother. When my daughters make a lot of noise. When my daughters make a lot of noise. It's never quiet in a big family. It is never, it is never quiet in a big family. And when my husband and I argue. And when my husband and I argue. My mother always knows. My mother always knows. Very good. So what's the main idea of this article? It's a uh, changing um, it's a changing uh, yeah, in the the changing USA. structure of families, yes. right? The changing structure of families. How families are living today. How are they living yes. in different situations today? Yes. So the, the correct answer for the main idea is letter A. It is becoming more common for families in the U.S. to live together. So the correct answer is letter A. Yeah. It is becoming more common for families in the U.S. to live together. Yes. What is the meaning of argue? Um, have a disagreement. Uh, for instance, you want your children to help with the chores at home and your husband says, no, they shouldn't have to help with the chores. Yes. So you disagree. Yes, so okay. you argue. You have your point of view and then he has his point of view and you disagree. Okay. I'm sure you have those kinds of times when you and your husband don't agree on everything. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's Sometimes what it's... <laughs> I think that's pretty normal. So, yes. Um, <laughs> that's what that is. Argue is when you disagree and you have a discussion. And it's always difficult when you have other family members living there and you're having a disagreement and they, they know everything that's going on because they live there with you. Yes. All right, let's look over um, at page nine, nine, 19 in your workbook. Yes. Match the sentences with the same meaning. So number one says, in many cultures, a traditional family has four generations living under one roof. So what sentence on the right does that match to? Letter D, D is in David in the past. Family mm -hmm. members live together in the same family. Yes. Family members live together in the same family. Yes. Number two says there are benefits to living with a big family. Which one of those sentences has mm -hmm. a similar meaning? Um, what are benefits? The benefits is... What are uh, the benefits? Or a good thing is um, benefits are good things, is a B? right? Yes, yes B. letter B. There are good things about living in a three or four generation household. So number yes. two is benefits are good things about living in a three or four generation hospital. So number two is letter B. <laughs> number yeah. three, my husband and I argue. Is it letter argue. A? Letter we don't a. agree with each other. Yes, we don't agree with each other and sometimes get angry. My yes. husband and I don't agree with each other and sometimes get angry. Very good. Letter A. Mm -hmm. Number four, my mother and daughter share the same bedroom. Is the letter E, they sleep in the same yes, room? Yes, they sleep in the same room. Letter E, they sleep in the same room. And number five, there isn't much privacy. Uh, is the letter C? 
Yes. There are few chances to be alone. Yeah. There are few chances to be alone. Letter C. There are few chances to be alone. Mm -hmm. So the next part says answer the questions with information from the article. So they first want you to give three benefits of mm -hmm. families living together. Now benefits are good things. So what are some of the good things about families living together? Yeah, uh, first time the, the grandmother, she can take care of the kids. Yes. Uh, and they have um, a close rela relationship and she helps take care of the children. Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, number two, it's, um, it, it will be the close relationship between the children yes. and the grandmother. Yes, the children and the grandparents have a close relationship. Very good. And what's the other one? Uh, it's... Um, the daughter, she can take care of, uh, or she yes. can take her mother to the doctor. Yes, she can take care of her mother. She, she can needs. take her mother to the doctor so she can take care of her. And the other one is they can save money because yes, they don't have to have money. two households of expenses. Yes. So they can save money. It's a main. Right. Yes. Yes. The next one says, what are two ways that living together can be difficult what are some of the things that make it difficult uh there is no uh, many chance uh, for privacy very little chance for privacy yeah and, and uh they are sharing in the same room yes and there can be room. a lot of noise there yeah. can be a lot of noise when they share the same space yeah very good okay um, Christine, I think I'm going to stop there today. That's okay. a good stopping point. Um, so to, next week, we'll start on uh, lesson five. Lesson five. Okay. So if you okay. want to look ahead, we'll be on lesson five next week. And we're still talking more about families, yeah. what people have in common. Okay. Okay. So next okay. week, we'll be on lesson five. Very good. Thank you, Christine. I, Thank I you. I my student. I'm sorry I got a late start this morning. No, you're fine. Tomorrow I had difficulty getting on my Zoom account. I think they want me to get my own Zoom account, so I may have to send you a new Zoom link. Okay. When I get my own uh, Zoom account, so uh, I, I will put it on WhatsApp, and I'll send you a text message, too, so you'll know that okay. I've set it up. So it'll be a different link next week. Um, okay. I don't know why my students that I had last year, none of them have come back. I keep <laughs> texting them and asking them to come back. You, you got my text messages this morning when I texted yes, you? Yes, yes. Okay. But I see the, um, it's, it's what? It's, I see I see it late, not, uh, I didn't say exactly when you send in the same time. Oh, you saw it late, okay. Yeah. Okay, well, I will try to text you uh, that I'm going to be having class to, as a reminder about class. And then I'll, okay. if I have a problem, text messaging seems to work very well for me. Okay. So just keep your phone handy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'll let you know what's going on if I'm having a problem. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, Christine. Mrs. I really thank enjoy you. having you in my class. You me have too. A, thank you. You have a very good week. Thank you. Thank Take you. Take care. Bye. Bye.